What's up guys, my name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics and today we're going to do some testing with some body armor. Uh, we have two of these. These things are over 20 years old. They were made in 1995. These are ceramic sappy plates. Um, I don't have any brand new body armor for us to test because right now we're still a small channel and can't really afford to just buy brand new body armor and us destroy it. But I will test body armor if some body armor companies want to send me some body armor. But anyways, for now, this is what we got. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take this, we're going to put it up against a 25 pound block of clay. We're going to shoot it with a few different rifle calibers. Hopefully it holds up. Uh, it is kind of old, so there's a chance that it will fail. Hopefully it doesn't. And as long as it does stop the bullet, we'll move the uh, plate down, we'll look at the clay, and we'll see what kind of impression is left on the clay to see what kind of energy transfer is still traveling through that plate and going into you when uh, the plate is shot. And I have two of these. Hopefully we only use one today because I'd like to do this test again with pistols, but we'll see. So now let's head outside and get started. All right, first of all, I'm very sorry about the wind. It's a very windy day today. I apologize. We have our 25 pound block of clay set up. I have a center block behind it, so it's something to push up against. And then we have our plate, our ceramic plate, right in front of it. We're going to shoot the plate and see what kind of impression we leave on the clay and see if we can get some energy transfer. Uh, that is if the plate actually stops a bullet because these are very old. So I, I don't know, but let's try it out. All right, we're going to start out with uh, these are brain fart. These are American Eagle 556 full metal jackets and they're 55 grain. Oh, and for you uh, safety police, people have been asking me if I wear ear protection. Yes, I always wear inner ear. See, these are nice little pink and yellow foam ear plugs. <laughs> I got them on sale at Tractor Supply. But I always put them in before I start filming. I don't put them in on camera because I don't want to waste your time. I can't believe it stopped that. All right, I'm most impressed by this because this plate is so old. It's very old and still did its job, which is really impressive. Uh, you know, we've got dust on our table from the ceramic coming out of it. Stop the bullet. We'll try and get that out later, maybe. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some fun with it at the end of the video, so we might find that bullet. And uh, we didn't have any energy transfer at all. That clay has no impression on it. And, I mean, it's soft. So, that's pretty wild that nothing happened to that piece of clay. And there's no bullet back here. So, now let's shoot it with something a little bigger. So now we're going to hit it with the AK-47. We have some Tula 7.62 by 39, 122 grain full metal jackets. I'm pretty sure I just shot that in the same spot. I, I did shoot it in the same spot. Uh, but I want to show you the results and then we will redo the test. So I pretty much shot it in the same spot. I was afraid it wasn't going to stop it, but it did stop it. And the clay got punched pretty hard. <laughs> Check that out. That'd be a pretty good punch to the chest. So I shot here so we could preserve the rest of this plate for some other shots. It did not make it all the way through it. There's a, there's a little bulge there. And it hit the clay pretty hard. It hit it so hard that it broke pieces of clay off. There's a piece back there. So it left a pretty big impression in that clay. That'd be a nice swift kick to the chest for sure. What are you doing? You concerned? I'm just shooting. Now we're going to hit with 30-06. I've got some Remington 
150 grain core lock, 30 out six. And shoot it out of a Ruger American rifle. It should be pretty interesting. I've got a scope on this thing, so I guess I just need to aim high. I hope it works. Hey, it works! Goodness! So I'm pretty impressed that, that old ceramic plate was able to stop that 30 out 6 Yes, it's a soft point bullet, but still, this is a very old ceramic plate, and I just shot it with a 30 out 6 and it stopped it. So, pretty cool. Got a good bulge back there, and uh, left a pretty big impression in the clay. I want to say the 7.62 by 39 was about that big, but I guarantee you the 30 out 6 is going to thump you in the chest a lot harder than the 7.62 by 39. That's pretty impressive. I don't think a 12 gauge is gonna give us a better energy transfer than the 30-06, but I wanna finish up with it anyways. I don't have any three inch slugs at the moment, so we're gonna use this Winchester Super X two and three quarters inch, one ounce slug. Let's see what happens. Shut up! So I may have been wrong about that. The slug hit the plate pretty hard. We hit right here. We did not make it all the way through the plate, of course. There's a bulge there. And we hit the clay pretty hard. So hard that there are pieces at the back of the table. And there's a pretty good impression in that clay. So I would say that that would hurt pretty bad if you were wearing a ceramic plate and you got hit in the chest with a 12 gauge slug. Now let's shoot the body armor with this AK-47 until we make it all the way through it. Well, that didn't take very long. I really wanted to shoot the plate more than twice but it fell over and plus we made it through it in two shots anyways. So there's the entrance hole, there's the exit. Now there's no energy transfer on the clay from the first shot and that's because I had this plate at a slight angle to try to keep it from falling over so it wasn't touching the clay so we didn't get a good impression. But second shot went through the plate, entered the clay right here. We left a pretty big hole in the clay and you'll notice there's concrete inside the hole because it blew through a cinder block right after that. So I ripped this plate apart. You can see that the ceramic is up front. Dude, shut up! And then behind that is Kevlar and it catches whatever the ceramic doesn't catch. You can tell we only have one hole and that was from the 7.62 by 39 when we were purposely trying to make it fail at the end. These are pieces of the ceramic that were at the bottom. Goodness gracious! The wind is awful. Here's pieces of ceramic that were at the bottom of the plate. And then here are pieces of bullet that were there. You can't really find much. The biggest piece I could find is here, and that's from the slug. But the uh, Ceramic does a real good job of just eating those bullets up. So I came inside and I reviewed the footage. I thought it was kind of weird that the 5.56 did not leave an impression in the clay. I got to thinking when we shot the plate twice, the 7.62 by 39, and I had the plate at a slight angle, it did not leave an impression in the clay because it was not making contact with the clay. I did push the plate up against the clay with the 5.56, but I'm wondering if it just wasn't making contact where it needed to be when I shot it, and that's why we did not have an impression at all in the clay. So as much as I don't want to use our second plate, I am going to go back outside, set it up again, and shoot it with 5.56 to see if we can get a different result. I'm going to really push that plate up against the clay the best I can and see if we get a different result. And hopefully we don't destroy the plate too badly to where we can't use it in a future video with pistols. So here you go. All right, new plate, 
same block of clay I have it pushed up against it as tight as it will go let's see if our results are any different so here's where we hit uh, it looks like we will still be able to use this plate again for another video let's see if our results are any different and we have a very small impression in the clay the last time we didn't have any kind of impression in the clay and this time it's just a very very small impression so that's with me literally pushing this plate up against the clay as hard as I possibly could we have just a little bit so still not very much energy transfer when we shot the plate with the 556 five, all right that's it I hope you enjoyed the video I wanted to apologize to you all about how late in the week I've been posting these videos I've had a lot of stuff going on with family and work, and it just hasn't been in the cards to get everything done uh, at the beginning of the week. Uh, I love this channel, and I love posting videos, but it is my hobby and something that I do for fun. So there are other things that have to be taken care of sometimes before I get to have fun and do stuff with the channel. But I am still going to give you a video a week, promise you that. It's just been kind of later in the week. But we are going to get back on track. I will start posting those videos more in the beginning again. And heck, we might even get two videos a week out. But you just need you to hang in there with me, all right? So today's question. When I was outside the AK-47, the AR-15, I couldn't help but think of that age-old question, you know, AK-47 or AR-15. People have been arguing over it for years. So my question is, if it was the zombie apocalypse and you could only have one, an AR-15 or an AK-47, which one would you pick? Leave your answers in the comment section down below. Guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're a new subscriber, don't forget to hit that little bell at the top. It's going to give you notifications when we upload new videos, and we upload new videos every week. Uh, if you really enjoyed the video, share it with your friends. We're trying to hit that 10,000 10, subscriber mark this year. Sorry, mush mouth. Trying to hit that 10,000 subscriber mark this year, and I could really use your help, so share it with your friends. If you're interested in Kentucky Ballistics Clothing, there's a link in the description down below that will take you to our shop. Also links in the description down below that will take you to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't forget to check us out over there too. Once again, my name is Scott. You've been watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.